Today I'm somewhere completely different, and as you can see, my mode of transport is somewhat strange, if a little smelly. Say hello to my friend Hamish. Oh, and this is his wife, Sheila. This is the Dubai Desert, one of the hottest places on Earth. So what better place to come and test the Range Rover Evoque's performance than here, under these extreme conditions? I'm here to meet John Winchester, Range Rover's resident product development engineer. And according to this, he should be here, about now. Ah, oh, that'll be him then. Range Rovers are tested throughout all types of climates around the world. From the arid, heat, dusty area like this of Dubai to the bitterly cold conditions of the Arctic Circle and Canada. I have a hunch that if that can survive this heat, it could potentially cope with a British summer. All three days of it. Hello, John. <laughs> All right, how are you doing? Good to meet you. Yeah, this is not Corley Services. It's certainly not. <laughs> this is John, and he's going to give me a flavour of the type of extreme endurance test the Evoque has to be put through here in Dubai. John, shall we? Jump in. This is a great place to test the Evoque's off-road credentials. Incredible baking heat, steep gradients, and endless dunes of shifting sand. It's just mountains made of sand, everywhere. In this harsh environment, John and his team are able to develop and fully test the Evoque systems to their limit. Oh. Data is monitored from up to 150 probes placed within the vehicle. This extreme testing has enabled the development of unique technologies, such as Land Rover's terrain response system, which makes the Evoque so capable. People buy Land Rovers, Range Rovers for their breadth of capability because they can go to places like this. They can go out and explore and uh, you know, enjoy, their, enjoy their vehicle. Even if they don't take them to this extreme, it's the fact that you know that it'll do it comfortably. Exactly. And... With the Evoque here, it's, it's, it's great. It's a nimble little car. It's got a great power to weight ratio. You get lots of feedback through the steering. It's just a great place to be. It feels very, very planted. An enjoyable experience to actually be in. It's quite a difficult surface, isn't it? If we can get a vehicle to, uh, to perform well here, uh, it'll perform well pretty much anywhere in the world. Well, the Evoque's certainly quite an impressive dune buster. Join me in the city for part two as the temperature rises even further. Oh, that is toasty. We're in Dubai to see how they test the Evoque's hot weather capability. And of course, it's not just about dune busting. The extreme heat of the city can be just as challenging. And to put this to the test, John has left the Evoque in direct sunlight for an hour, cooking nicely. You know when you climb inside your car on a hot day and it's absolutely stifling inside, the first thing you do is reach for the air conditioning button. Well, that's exactly what this test is. It's called the Aircon Pull Down and Solar Soak. Oh, that is toasty. That is an oven. Go on then, what is it? 55 degrees. I'm turning into gravy. So the big challenge for the sun-baked Evoque is to quickly prevent the occupants from melting while simultaneously keeping the engine systems cool. A very tough task in this environment. And to make it even tougher, John deliberately heads straight for the rush hour jam. In these temperatures, this slow going heavy traffic pushes the Evoque's cooling systems to the max. But I would have to say it coped very well indeed.
We've been in traffic now for, for some three hours and it's 38 degrees centigrade outside, so it's quite warm. And although this might seem very mundane, this is actually the test that John has to carry out to ensure two things. Firstly, that the air conditioning inside the cabin's functioning as it should, and B, to make sure the cooling system of the engine's performing under these temperatures. So where better to do it than in the rush hour at the souk? But thanks to Range Rover's engineering, I'm actually quite comfortable and cool. I suspect the people out there walking and on motorbikes are not so comfortable. With the hot traffic jam test completed, I was grateful when we were able to get up to speed and experience the Evoque on the highway. The ride is exceptional. It's comfortable. I'm viewing the world out through the classic command position. In fact, it's got all the DNA that you'd expect from a Range Rover. Funny that, because it is a Range Rover. It's been fascinating for me to be able to explore the capabilities of the Evoque in real-life extreme environments. But, alas, my enjoyable journey with John and his team has come to an end. My time here in Dubai has really hit home the extent of real-world test driving before any Range Rover Evoque is signed off or put on sale. Now, if you thought that these cars were merely punished on private test facilities, now you know they cover thousands of miles on public roads in the sweltering heat and the chaotic rush hour, not to mention off the road in the desolate lands of sand. The only way a Range Rover can survive years of extremes is to subject it to exactly that. So the next time you see a Land Rover engineer looking a bit tired and a bit sweaty, you know the reason why. Cheers, John. Sleep well.